Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. For those of you who haven't seen the 2003 film The Room, let me just tell you, it is as gloriously unwashably bad as its reputation would lead you to believe. The story behind the making of The Room, which was the brainchild of the eccentric uh, I don't even know if eccentric quite covers it, actually. This guy, Tommy Wiseau, is truly an enigma. A man of indeterminate age and national origin, and seemingly unlimited means, but no real filmmaking talent to speak of, just willed this piece of cinematic garbage into existence, where it inexplicably became beloved and mocked in equal measure, taking on a cult status through midnight showings, festival screenings, and things like Riff Tracks Live, which is how I first laid my eyes upon it. This cult status has only fueled the legend of the reclusive and inscrutable figure of Wiseau, and the production of the film, which was chronicled in the book by cast member Greg Sestero, upon which this movie is based, has also become the stuff of legend as well. So now, here comes the movie version of that legend, and it is brought to breezy life by director James Franco, who plays Wiseau and casts a veritable who's who of his famous friends including Seth Rogen, Alison Brie, and his brother Dave Franco as Sestero. There's also a litany of other famous faces who make cameos, and those are too fun to spoil. It seems that The Room really struck a chord with young Hollywood, and loads of famous actors were chomping at the bit to do their own small part to pay tribute to the film that must have inspired countless tipsy viewing parties in the Hollywood Hills over the past decade. That's what the disaster artist feels like, for better and for worse, a big party. A celebration of the glorious badness that is the room, both for people recreating it on screen and for the people in the audience. I should probably point out that I saw this film with a sold out industry crowd deep in the Hollywood Hills, presumably full of people who knew the movie by heart. And in that room, it absolutely killed. A lot of those laughs were preemptive laughs of recognition, like, oh, 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 now they're gonna do the football scene. Here we go, guys. In short, the disaster artist is mostly a celebration of the room, if not a downright recreation of it. And on those terms, it's a pretty darn good one. It's made with affection by people who both love their real-life counterparts and are very, very good at impersonating them. I mean, you really can't go without mentioning how James Franco at some points literally disappears into the character of Wasso. Occasionally, I thought they may have even swapped in the real Wasso or given Franco facial prosthetics or both. If it weren't for Spring Breakers, and if not for a few moments here where it feels like he's just sort of goofing off with an over-the-top accent meant to sort of wind up his friends at a party, I might call this James Franco's best performance to date. A certainly channels the charisma and stubborn optimism of Wiseau, and I challenge you to take your eyes off of him every moment he's on screen. Franco as director also painstakingly recreates the various scenes he depicts from the room, and if you haven't seen it, don't worry, as the credits roll you will get to see a side-by-side -side comparison of key scenes in The Disaster Artist and their counterparts in The Room, and you will be amazed. If you haven't seen The Room, this section here, coming as it does right as you're making your way to the door, will be where you actually appreciate what a great homage Franco and crew have pulled off. But a mere homage is really what the disaster artist is dealing you here. A loving homage to an untalented man with a dream, made by a bunch of people who share that dream, but who also have talent to back it up. What the disaster artist doesn't provide is any real insight into its subject. The kind you'd expect from a making of film like, say, uh, Saving Mr. Banks. The questions, and there are many, that you may have about why so at the beginning of the film are not only unanswered by the end, the film actually gleefully reminds you of this fact via a title card at the end. There's an odd sort of distance between the filmmakers and their subject, a willingness to remain surface level that results in the film being merely a light-hearted romp, rather than a traditional behind-the-scenes biopic, the kind that usually offers a new perspective on a beloved film. Instead of showing you things you never knew, the movie merely frames the things you already know around a simplified story of the friendship between Sestero and Wiseau that plays like a surface-level Hollywood fable, like a tall tale, and in doing so plays directly to fans of the room, not by adding additional context or detail, but by merely throwing its arms around them and saying, yeah, wasn't this wild? And wild it is. I had a lot of fun with this film, and I especially feel like it's a great companion piece to watching the room itself. I award the disaster artist a large bag of popcorn, because it's a pleasant reminder that sometimes the best thing to do when you fall flat on your face is to pick yourself up, laugh along with everyone, and say with confidence, yeah, I'm meant to do that. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more. And support us, please, by clicking subscribe while you're there, and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the disaster artist as well, so jump into the comments and let me know. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark.